I'm just gonna jump straight into like my presentation, which is the second part, uh, which is actually on content security policy. Um, yeah, so, so, so recently this content security policy thing has been gaining traction. I've seen it, uh, starting to see it come up like everywhere. Oh, wait, can you see the, okay, let me move this away. Okay, so that's why I decided, and, and actually I had to use it a bit for work. So then I dive into this and I thought it was a good opportunity to share with all of you. So, next slide. So actually to start off everything, then comes the question like what, act, what actually is content security policy? So actually content security policy um, is a security feature that that allows us to control exactly, uh, to make sure that our, our app only does the things that we intend it to do. So it actually takes a whitelisting approach to, uh, to whitelist assets, like script styles, or like images, fonts, etc., etc. et cetera. Whitelist the, the, these assets, and then we can totally control uh, whether they are executed or not. Okay. So, um, so this is uh, one of the solutions that, is ca that, that actually came up from prevent to protecting your websites from getting attacked, like cross-site scripting or data type attacks. Because usually people can uh, run some script and embed something into your website and then they just read your user, your user data, like read the cookies, everything of your website. So this is some. I don't think that it can prevent all, but it can prevent most of it. So, um, so how does it work, right? So it's actually very simple. It's only a, just one HTTP response header. And the response header is just content security policy. And then when, when users request for, for your website, and then it's, it just send back to, to the user through and then through the HTTP response. So, so when browser detects this like response header, then it's actually the browser that is enforcing the policy. So uh, that's why that makes it even more lightweight. So how, how does, what does it look like? So this is like an example I took from contentsecuritypolicy.com. I thought they, since they are contentsecuritypolicy.com, they must have like enforced content security policy, right? So this is an example. Uh, when you type content security policy .com in your browser and then you open your dev, dev tools and you look at the response header, you will see this. So, so this is an example of a content security policy. So how do you read, like, in this example, it looks like it's very gibberish, like a lot of things, like some hash going on, some URLs going on, and some like non-self thing going on. So actually how to read it is that um, the way that content security policy is constructed is actually starts from directives. So directives specify, there's one directive for almost all types of assets and then it's split by semicolon. So you have direct the directive like script source and then all the values and then after that you have a semicolon then you have style source and all the values in a semicolon. So uh, I think it's quite straightforward that script source just means that uh, JavaScript sources and then style source just uh, CSS style sheet sources, font source is for fonts, image is for image, and frame is for iframes. So um, the way to read it is really like, straightforward. So like I said, there's a lot, a lot of directives and then the full list can be found here if you um, the MDN also has, if you are very familiar with MDN, like Mozilla Developer Network, they also maintain a, a documentation there, the specification there for content security policy. You will be able to find the full list of directives there also. So, yeah, so some of the things that is not shown in the previous slide, like connect source, uh, prefetch source, if you, you use all this in your work, and then there's like a lot more, like, uh, base URI, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So then just now we talk about the directive, then why is the like, the actual sources, right? So the actual sources comes right after the directive. So 
um, just a few types here you can see is like none. None is like you don't allow anything at all. Self allows like assets from your own origin. Like for example, you have your website is called like ruby.sg and then you only allow um, assets from ruby.sg, like JavaScript from ruby.sg or, or CSS from ruby.sg. So this is like self, same origin. Then of course, then you have the usual URLs that you whitelist that you and you can literally throw the entire, like saying that, uh, for example, like I want to allow everything from googleanalytics.com and then you, then the browser will just let all this, all the uh, sources from googleanalytics.com to just run and execute for your website. So then again, like there's a lot, quite a, quite a lot of types of sources on top of the normal URLs. Like one, some example is like the star is like a wildcard and then you have HTTPS to only allow assets to load over HTTPS. Then SHA is, SHA is a bit, um, I think most of y'all will be familiar with it. Like JavaScript text already has this integrity HTML attribute that you put a SHA there where the browser will automatically check the SHA and then the script, where the, the SHA of that script and then see whether it matches. If it matches, then it will execute it. So in this case, if you put the SHA in your content security policy, then you don't need to put the integrity HTML attribute. You just put in your content security policy and your browser will do this SHA matching uh, on the fly. Yeah, so, so now we talk about, just now we talk about like content security policy in general, but how do we use it in real? Actually, in Rails, it's very simple. Since Rails 5.2, Rails have provided a domain-specific language for us to configure a content security policy. And then, if you are five, Rails 5.2 onwards, when you do Rails new, you will automatically see an initializer, content security policy initializer uh, in config stash initializers. So how does it look like? This is an example. Um, that I came up or I just edited or uncommented some stuff here. So like all Rails config is very straightforward. It's just Rails con application config, content security policy. And then here you, you can see the directives and the sources, like default source, image source, script source, source source. And like the list goes on and on. Now. And then, oh no, the directive goes on and on and on. And then, and then after you policy.default source, then you can specify all the sources that you want to allow. So like just now I said self was uh, to allow same origin. So here image source, I also allow images from that comes from ruby.sg. And then you can add all the SHA, add all the other URLs here, just, just comma and then append and then just get it going. So this is a DS, very, very simple DSL that Rails provide for us to use. So then after you implemented your content security policy, how do you know, like where do you see whether your website, anything is breaking or not? So because it's like enforced on the browser side, so you can easily just open your console and then your browser will just, uh, you will see the error logs there for content security policy. And in this example, you can see that like, um, the loading of the ruby.sg asset not PNG is blocked because of the image source. So as simple as this. The first one, inject global hook is uh, actually a Firefox uh, extension. So it, it blocks that. So it literally blocks everything. So it's like a hardcore lockdown of your website. So this is actually, I, this is something that I faced at work and thought is very, very important about. Now it's like so easy to enforce content security policy. But then there's actually a danger of like premature enforcement of it. You might find yourself getting a lot of calls from your client. Hey, why this break? Why that break? Like everything starts to break without you knowing. So actually one problem of premature enforcement is uh, things will start breaking. Even if it works on your computer, doesn't mean that it will work on other, other people's computer or your client's computer or your user's computer because it's a browser side enforcement, right? So and especially when you have like a lot of pages, your app is very big, you 
have a lot of types of assets coming from all over the place and or you let users load their own assets put their own urls load assets and etc etc then you then then the app might break for them but not break for you so then this is one very uh very thing very um, dangerous thing to do to prematurely enforce so so it's as if that the people who um, who who design content security policy knew about this problem so then that's why they came up with this thing report only mode or maybe they went through this 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 entire process that's why they came out report only mode so actually this report only mode right it doesn't lock down but then it still locks all the errors for you to see so so you can uh so you should always start from report only mode and then let let your application run for for some time and then to go and collect the errors in a while and then you and then uh then you can analyze all these errors and take some time to tune your content security policy until it stabilized then you can enforce it then you this is the one way to make sure that uh, it doesn't like oh it doesn't suddenly break for your users. So for report only mode for in Rails DSL is also very simple. It's just like a flag to turn it on to true. So application config content security policy report only equals to true. And then you will see that the header switches from content security policy to content security policy report only. So it's and then behind that is exactly the same. It's just the header changes. And then now it goes into a report only mode. But then, so now you have report only mode. Then how do you collect errors? Like just now I said you collect the errors in a while and then you take it all back and analyze and then you, uh, and then you fine tune your content security policy. So here, Rails also provide a report URI um, uh, of a directive. So what happens is that your browser when it enforces the content security policy or you or you just runs the content security policy on your website on the user's browser and then you turn on report whether you turn on report on input or not it will still send a post request to whatever you report uri that you specified here and then it will send a post request and then for example in rails you can easily collect uh, create a controller and a route to catch it and then uh, there you go, you, you, will, you can start doing something like saving it in a database or collect it somewhere to analyze all these, uh, all these reports. So one example, uh, just now I say it's a post request, right? So it's actually a simple JSON format. And then, and then like in this example, I just do a JSON pass and then uh, the request body string and you can see that it's just a hash, CSP report, block URI, and all the details of what broke, what, uh, what is the thing that broke content security policy or, or violated the content security policy. So after looking at all these um, errors, you will be able to fine tune. So I actually wanted to go through, want to go through a demo. Uh, and let me reshare my screen. I need to show uh, my desktop. Okay. So let me move this away. So actually I have a demo here. And then um, I should have started this earlier. And then I have a website. It's back. And then we can see that like something is blocked. So actually I have an image here. Lah. It doesn't show. So here, I actually wanted to show your report URI, content security policy. So I actually created a controller to, to catch this thing. And then let me uh, just turn on the report only mode. And because it's an initializer, right, I have to restart it. And here, I want to report control. So here I have a route that actually just catches, 
just the content security policy stuff. Okay. And then when I refresh, uh, okay, I'm skipping a lot of steps, but I, I just got to show you that uh, now I have to allow the Ruby SG. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, because I made it like report only, that's why I didn't enforce. So, so now I, so just now I commented this out, but then I actually commented the report only mode. So that's why the image appeared. But actually, like if I do it like that, uh, I did don't allow the Ruby SG to run the image to, uh, to, to be whitelisted. Then I shouldn't, So I shouldn't be able to see the image here. Long. So this is, uh, then when I allow it, so this is a very simple example. It's just one image. Uh, and then now the image should come up and then you will see that the console thing is gone. So there's some, still some like block stuff. I'm not gonna go, go through it now. But it's actually, it's just like this simple content security policy. Um, yeah, so, so then the only the other thing that I really wanted to demo is to catch it here. But I think you guys get the, get the, get the idea that once you catch the violation here, you can pump it into a DB or something and then analyze it and then come back here to uh, fine tune it to allow some more stuff, blah, blah, blah. And then after when you are really really done, you can turn off this, turn off the report only mode, and then done. Content security policy uh, enforcement is done. Yeah. So there's actually a very a lot of talks, very good talks on it, and then a lot of um, content on how to do content security policy because I think that a lot of people got burned like doing it without uh, prior like people doing it before and telling them like where are the gaps that you should not fall in. So there's actually a lot of conference talks over over the past few years on, on this thing. So it's great to, to, to uh, go and watch them. And then once you have content security policy down uh, and force in your website, you can really uh, uh, help uh, protect your website from basic cross-site scripting attacks and like those uh, people go and deface your website. It's kind of very basic attacks. So yep, that's it for my talk for today. It's a very simple sharing and I hope that you guys find um, find content security. This, this talk useful for your work. If you are, it's not just Rails, lah, any web servers, as long as you just enforce this header and then all these things will take. Yep. So that that's all for um, that's all for my talk for today. Content security policy. Okay. So for the next part, uh, actually we are almost at the end. Uh, and if you are anybody got any questions, right? I know I didn't put any time. You can ask in the Telegram group, and then I will I will answer answer it there. So now the next part is like for jobs. If anybody have any looking for jobs or anybody like have any openings that you want to share? Does anybody have? Nope. Okay, then I think uh, we, we can move on. So the next Ruby meetup is scheduled on the 15th. So if you didn't know that a Ruby meetup is actually on the, on the third, third Thursday of every month. So uh, it's very pretty simple to track. Uh, just third Thursday, it's always the third Thursday. So please RSVP if you're coming. And then uh, I have opened a GitHub issue for it already. If you, are, if you wish to share something, please go and comment this and then I will follow up with you. Um, or you can go, go, go check back to the issue if you are looking like you want to find out real time What's the what's what talks are happening, etc. Yep. And then uh if you don't know all our Ruby SG channels, 
mainly the GitHub Ruby SG uh, organization, the Facebook group Singapore Ruby Brigade, and then our meetup.com group Singapore Ruby group. So, and then of course the Ruby SG Telegram group. Uh, so, yep, that's it for today. Uh, thank you all for coming and hope to see you all like in the next, 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 all the, all the meetups. <laughs> okay.